So I changed the tire, get ready to go out and do tonight's bit of filming. Buzzing. This little gem that we found out on the road tonight is a common cookery snake. They're named after the cookery knife, which their teeth resemble. Their teeth are actually pretty neat. They're manufactured to slice through reptile eggs, which actually form up the major part of their diet. Youngsters will also actually take spiders, which I really only just learned earlier. They'll take spiders, small insects and geckos. <laughs> and then, yeah, when they're adults, they pretty much exclusively feed on reptile eggs. Common cookery, of course, is the most common one out of the whole lot of them. Absolutely stunning little snake. They can sometimes have a little bit of an attitude on him. If he does get grumpy, he'll flare up in his neck. We flatten his neck out and give himself a bit more of a harsher looking posture. So as you can see, they're quite cute, humble little snakes. Fantastic little fella we've got here. And I'm just gonna pop him down here, let him go on his way. Go on off you go, pal. See ya. This is where it gets a little bit more tetchy. This is the silent killer, the night stalker, the common crate, and it is perceived to be the most venomous snake on the whole Indian subcontinent. And during the daytime, they're a lot more relaxed, they're a lot more of an easier animal to work with. At nighttime, this is like their prime time, this is when they're out hunting. Uh, common crates pretty much eat mostly just other snakes, but will also take rodents occasionally. Yeah, like the cobra as well. Females have been known to guard the eggs when, uh, until they hatch. Drop for drop. Yeah, the venom the snake can kill you in up to three hours if you're not careful and you seek um, immediate medical help. Neurotoxins, myotoxins. Myotoxins are actually what paralyzes you, um, basically stops your diaphragm from working. And basically you'll just suffocate on th um, thin air. And that's how you'll end up being um, deceased from a bite from this animal. hexagonal scales that run all the way down the body, all the way down the spinal column. And they also have a bit of a triangular form to their body too, which is quite distinguishable amongst crates. Fantastic looking animal though, huh? One to be very, very careful of and very, very wary of. And it's working fantastic on the hook. So, if you're living in the village, before you bed down at night, Make sure you're off the floor and make sure you look under everything to make sure one of these ain't cruising about. Though to be fair, they're not exactly aggressive as you can tell as well. Merely just wants to get away and carry on exploring in the dark, which is what we're gonna do. Okay.
Oh, you've got eye shine on him. <laughs> This is the largest of all the crates. This is the banded crate. And it's got the largest venom glands as well, almost out of all of them. And if he bit you, you'd be dead in up to about 15 hours. So you've got quite a lot of time to get to the hospital. The reason this usually happens as well is because the banded crate doesn't always put in the full amount of venom. If he did, there's enough there to kill a cow all in the space of a day. Now, favorite snake, of course, coloration, black and yellow, black and yellow. Very, very nice typical crate design, triangular body, hexagonal scales all the way down the back spinal column from the head to the tip of the tail. The tail tip, of course, is blunt. When they're younger, it's used as a decoy and when they're older as well, because it basically looks like another form of a head, doesn't it? It gives the snake enough time to either lay a bite in or just to perhaps get away, basically, at its own pace and leisure. This is an absolute fantastic snake. It is almost strictly ophiophagus, so it will only eat other snakes. So um, in a way, it's a farmer's friend as well. And as you can see, very reluctant to bite, very very chilled in its demeanor and the whole way it presents itself. It'll just sit on the hook there quite happily whilst we film. And in the perfect scenario for it, this nice bit of a bamboo grove. Absolutely fantastic, gorgeous snake. It does get released. Yeah. Cool. Do I take some photos? Absolutely love doing releases, and this is the snake I have yet to ever even see at a lone handle. It's a common bronze back snake, common tree snake found right throughout India, but the actual genus Dendrolaphus is found all over Asia. Oh, it's a bit snappy, really. from India all the way through to Australia. Cool, they got a good little attitude on them, right? They've got keel belly scales, so they can actually climb up brick walls quite easily and scale all, all kinds of tree. Uh, there's two species here. You've got the common one, this one here, who you can tell from the darker tongue and the white head spot marking. And then you've got his cousin, the painted bronze back, who's got like an orange tongue, of course, and no white head spot marking. Another way you can tell the difference as well is if they're dead, you can check their maxillary teeth, which will number different between species. Now, he's very, very, very keen to go. 
if I hold him up like this, he's going to climb up into the tree for us and show us all his balancing skills. Here we go. He's like a non-venomous black mamba. <laughs> Oop, steady. And he's off. Mimicry is something that's very common in the natural world. It's when two species will actually try to imitate the other. Generally, the non venomous one will pretend to be the venomous one. Which is what the role of sand boa here is playing, where it's hiding his head underneath its body scales. Which is pretty much similar to what this Russell's Viper would do. And of course he can't hiss as loud, but still, the behaviour is supposed to mimic each other basically in the form of defence. And this is the one you don't want to get bitten by. The one with cytotoxic venom that can destroy limbs, but also hematoxins that will ruin your kidney system. And if this bites you, you're just going to bleed quite a lot of course. They've both got keel scales. This one's got keel scales more. Going to use a grab and slippery prey. This one's big enough to take something like a small squirrel, possibly from the sand or a bird from ambush. The Russell's is strictly for defence with its keel scales, as it's got quite a lot of predators like birds, monitors, things that want to crunch on it. So having keel scales makes you a little bit less tasty than usual. Absolutely both great snakes, nice ones to work with. And this Russell's is actually grabbing by the way as well, so hopefully when she gets released back into the wild eventually she'll give birth to quite a few young, maybe even up to 63, which is the maximum number. Uh, neither snake's actually endangered, but they are both brilliant for the ecosystem either way. Even if one does bite more people than anyone else in India, it still has to play a role in nature, you know, controlling rodents, pest control. And I think both of them are just absolutely fantastic to look at as well as work with. Please look how well behaved they're being now. I'd love to thank you all for your time for watching all these videos. I've absolutely had a great pleasure in making all of them. Uh, they are designed for snake conservation as well. As well, just to highlight how fantastically brilliant they are basically. Just as nice as birds and fish like I've already stated before in a video I've done for Mr. Product Dust here. Thank you. It's very nice to have you here with me too, sir. And of course, without bottles help, we shouldn't be doing this either. Got my wingman watching me over here. And we've got Sparoop on camera there. Who, yeah, who could make the made everything here possible. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Strawu. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you everyone for watching all of my videos. I hope you enjoyed them as much as all four of us here have um, enjoyed making them. Thank you very much and take care. Done. Uh Saroop! Oh, yo, 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 bandage, bandage, bandage! Shoot! Oh, no! Oh, bloody no! Oh, I need to stay as calm as possible right now, this is really not good. You've got me right around here. I can barely feel it, the teeth are so small, obviously, the fangs. I didn't really even feel it go in properly. But I can feel a sort of numbness happening here now, this ain't good, yeah. Um, give me a crack bandage on there please, quick as possible, please. The idea is not to 
cut the complete pressure off. It's not a tourniquet. It's just a slight compression bandage to hopefully slow down the venom a bit. The idea is to at least be able to fit two fingers behind the bandage when it's securely on. You just go all the way up the arm and you just get rid of this as well. Well, wasn't really a medical disaster in the end after all, was it? <laughs> I bet loads of people are thinking, oh yeah, that Edwin Dunkley, he's finally been bitten by a snake, he's an idiot, he should be picking him up and not doing all this thing, he doesn't know what he's doing. This is just a plain, simple, harmless wolf snake, something I'm very, very, very familiar with. The idea of the video, of course, is just to give you an idea of what you should do if you were to get bitten by a crate or any venomous snake in that sort of situation. This is merely just a mega pressure bandage. As you can see, two fingers can fit right behind it. The idea is not to actually cut off, you know, the amount of venom traveling towards you, is to control it. By putting on a pressure bandage, uh, leaving it on for at least 20 minutes each time, taking it off and putting it back on again, you're only controlling the amount of venom so it doesn't spread around your body quicker. It buys you a tiny bit more time. Um, obviously, if you had any more further, you know, health distress, such as, you know, going into respiratory failure and that, then you would have to obviously um, rely maybe on mouth to mouth <laughs> and further precautions. Yeah, uh, this guy's completely harmless, obviously. He's a uh, crate mimic. Colours are there to meant, to, meant to actually mimic the uh, common crate. He does it quite well, almost down to a T. The way you can tell he's actually a wolf snake, of course, pear, about a pear shaped head, elongated flat head, pattern his tail, and, well, he's more eager to bite. <laughs> you pop him back, let him go, and that's the end of that. যে মার্টিন স্টাম স্পটটা পাওয়া যাচ্ছে এবং আমি যতটা আইডিয়া করে বুঝতে পারছি এটা রিঅ্যাকশনে হতে পারে রিঅ্যাকশনে হতে পারে কারণ হচ্ছে এটা গোগ্র হলে আর ওই স্পটটা বেশি পড়তো এটা রিঅ্যাকশনে তবে এটা চেক করে দেখা যাক একদম ওকে 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 এই মুখ নিয়ে কি ধরাই আচ্ছা ওই দিকে ফলো করতে কোনো গর্ত মতো আছে নাকি এটি গেট ইউ টং তুমি তো দেখলে না এটা প্রথম থেকে যা গোত্রে পালিশ হয়েছিল তাই না হয়তো এই দশটা বন্ধ করো তো আমার আইডিয়া কিছু আছে আরে তো সবটা হেনচের বাইরে হয়ে গেছে Oh my god good days Okay yeah the geo car Sawas Yes Ready Yeah I see La to kura to kura to kura Sar da sar da sar da Hey ta pura video ta na ita pura video ta Continue video running hocche amar Ha ta tum uthe dana amar kurta Eta na eta na buro kop mari Na na ma eta abe Amar oi der mal hobe na Mai thara na mal बेटा हूक नहीं सरचे पीछे
Oh. Ah, there we are. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's two in it. No, it's one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Just slow down. Yeah, yeah. They're a lot more confused at night than it would be in the day. We've just woken them up. We. Oh, go, 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 We'll give it our best go. He's calming down now. Look, there we are. Finally, got you in a better state of mood, haven't we? He knows he's not in too much harm now. In fact, he ain't bit his head off yet. <laughs> there we are. Lovely. No problem, huh? Lovely sort. Yeah. Of course, this is when he's going to be sleeping, so that's why he's a little bit more wee, Tetchy, than he should be. Wait. <laughs> he's just confused yeah, that's during it. the night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he don't know where he's going, which means he can't really see me, which means he might actually bite me if he does get to bump into me properly. Just uh, get released uh, on that uh, same place. Yeah, where are you going to die? Just go. Yeah. Put up. Yeah. There we go. It's alright now. Oh, that's stinky. <laughs> so stinky. It's good, okay. huh? Very good. It's sanitizer. Hmm? Oh, yeah, sanitizer, yeah. Okay. Chalo. The, same, 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 same jagai. Same jagai release kodo. Released in the same hole. Oh. Like one. Bushana, 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 bushana. I'll we'll put it all back for him, shall we, a little bit? I start putting it all back a bit and it won't forget in there first and then Great. Okay. Eddie, get some closer. Get some closer. And some about this rescue mission. Just to brief uh, some details uh, the, uh, about this uh, hunting yeah. of rat snake. Just to uh, give uh, some uh, details information on video. Well, thank you to Bockle's excellent skills here. We actually managed to locate a rat snake in pitch black darkness. It's the first time I've ever held one in the dark and uh, yeah, it's the closest I've come to getting bitten the whole time I've been in India. Though, to be fair, it didn't even open its mouth. I think it's more confused, obviously, where it's out in the darkness. But still, yeah, we got the snake out. We rebuilt, we rebuilt his house for him afterwards and uh, yeah, <laughs> mission complete. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie, 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 stop, stop, stop. Everything's fine, man. Stop, stop. Don't go there. Why? Don't go. 
Don't go. Why? Please. Why? Come. Fine. Absolutely fine. আমাদের কাজ আর দেবাশিসের কাজ একই রকমই একই আমি নিজে টাই করেছি আশঙ্কা <laughs> যখন রেগে যায় বা ভয় দেখানোর ব্যাপার থাকে তখনই এটা হচ্ছে নর্মাল কালার হচ্ছে এইটা আমি জানি বা আমার আপনাদের বলাটা কর্তব্য এবার আপনারা যদি নার্ভাস হয়ে যান তাহলে আপনার হাত করবে আচ্ছা মাছের মতো একবার যদি ধরে না আটকে যাবে কামড়ে ও দাঁত আর নিজেই আটকে ফেলবে মাছের দাঁতের মতো মানে ও চাইবে শুধু গ্রিপ করার জন্য কারণ দাঁত গুলো না এদের পিছন দিকে এরকম ব্যান্ড করানো থাকে বড়শির মতো কোনটা আপনার কিছু হয়নি এ তো বাচ্চা তো যে কারণে দাঁতে এখনো প্রেশারটা পড়ে যদি বড় হতো তাহলে একটু হালকা বিট বিট ব্লিড হতো নারকেল গাছ পাচ্ছে বেশি থাকে এগুলো কোনটা এটা নর্থ বেঙ্গল এত বড় 